Hello everybody and welcome to day two of our five day challenge to eliminate stress. I hope you did your homework. I hope you tore up or burned or buried all those negative perceptions you had before about things that bother you. They're gone. So they won't bother you anymore. Okay. So let's move on to the next part of our lesson today. So let's talk about stress. You know that stress is a brain event. It's not actually an exterior event. Bre stress is not, you know, out there. Oh, there's stress. No, stress is in here. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. It's inside of you. You create the stress. The event is just an event. It can be positive or negative according to your perception and your response. Okay? So first we have an event, then we have a perception, then we have a response. Now our response is physiological with our body, it's emotional with our feelings, and it's cognitive with our thoughts. So we have both physical, mental, and spiritual or psychological response. The result is we can either adapt to the event, we can either cope with it or fail to cope with it, and either way there's going to be either costs or benefits. It's up to how we respond. So let's talk about the causes and effects of stress. Okay, the causes of stress are triggers of patterns that you have established unconsciously in your brain. In other words, through your previous experience as a human being, you've had many events happen to you and you have labeled those events as dangerous or painful or uncomfortable or undesirable, whatever it is. But you also have events you've labeled wonderful, fantastic, exciting, gratifying. But those events that caused you to label them in a negative way, those events are associated with patterns. So let's say when you were a little child, you got bit by a dog. Now, maybe because of that, you became afraid of dogs. Oh, I don't want to get your dog. They bite, they bite. Dogs bite. I don't want them. Okay, so you, you had created a pattern, and dogs are the trigger of that pattern, and they cause you to have fear. They cause you to have stress. So these are unconsciously developed in your brain to potentially protect you from danger so that you could survive. Now these triggers are from your limbic or lizard brain. They've been there for millions of years. Okay, that's why they're called the lizard brain. Early in the formation of human beings, our brain was similar to a lizard. It just was there to help us survive, okay? Uh, thanks to this part of the brain for over the past two million years, we have survived. So we, we're not going to, you know, negate that, but we're going to deal with it in an appropriate manner. Okay. The problem is that today our need for physical survival may not be the same as it was 20,000 years ago. How often are you attacked by a wild tiger or a dinosaur? M maybe you've never been attacked by those things. And yet still you feel stress, still your limbic brain responds to protect you. Maybe it's overly protective, you know. We are no longer usually threatened like this. But, you know, we do have work pressures and deadlines and family issues. And they can cause us to become more alert, but they do not actually threaten our very existence. So perhaps you could say we are adapting like we did 20,000 years ago, but that may be inappropriate for today's reality. We need to change. We need to evolve. That's what we're doing now. So let's talk about the process of developing stress. So in today's world, what causes us? It's unpredictability, uncertainty, overlapping events that are surprising or unusual for us. And there's a compounding effect. It's not just one thing. It's one after another after another. And our expectations are very often not aligned with reality. We expect people to respond to a certain, a certain way. 
and if they don't, we get stressed out, we get upset. Well, maybe they didn't get, you know, a copy of our Constitution. They didn't know that we require them to respond in a certain way. So if we expect them to do that, that might be not appropriate, okay? However, the stress that we feel is an involuntary response. It just happens automatically until we evolve and rewire our brain. The events outside are often called stressors. But you know that's misleading. It's not a stressor. It didn't cause the stress. It's your perception and your response that causes the stress. Things like to-do lists, deadlines, family obligations, pressure to achieve, health concerns. These can cause you to become more alert or more concerned or to worry, but these events will not lead to your death. So stress might be a little bit, you know, inappropriate at that time. So your body responds to thoughts and perceptions in certain ways. First, if there's stress, hormones are excreted. These hormones will lead to the release of cortisol and adrenaline in your body. These are negative hormones. Then what happens is your pupils will dilate. You start breathing deeply. Food movement slows down. Your blood pressure increases. Your muscles tremble. Saliva flow decreases. This is for even acute stress. And then for chronic stress, it goes further. There is a loss of memory. There is confusion, insomnia, fatigue. There is a loss of interest, apathy. There's difficulty in making decisions. And there's poor judgment, you know. And even cynicism will develop. You start to lose hope. You start to become very less optimistic, kind of, you know, sarcastic. So we want to change that. We want to prevent future stress by building a positive framework. Okay? This is one technique. You know, the best defense is a great offense. I know you've often heard, hey, the best offense is a great defense, which is true. But to stop us from being defeated, we need to stay positive. We need to keep moving forward and goal-oriented. So whatever's trying to hold us back, it just passes us by. We just keep moving forward, moving forward. Words that cause us stress have disappeared from our vocabulary. Remember, we tore up those little pieces of paper and threw it away. Now we focus our thoughts on positive perspectives, okay? We change our vocabulary. These are words we can use every day to become more positive. Let's memorize them. Happy, enlightened, empowered, challenging, curious, different, intoxicating, etc. These are the type of words we can use. I'll give you an example, and then this is going to be your homework assignment. These are examples of transformation of language. So instead of saying, I feel stressed out. You can say, that is very challenging. You don't have to say it's stressful. You can say it's challenging. You see, immediately you change the narrative. Instead of saying, this really bothers me. I hate it. You can change that into, well, that's interesting. What can I learn from this? Instead of saying, I can't do that. You can change it into, wow, I never thought about that. What are some different ways I can approach this? You see, we can change our negative responses into positive responses. You may have heard the phrase, fake it till you make it. Sometimes that's not the best way to go. However, sometimes when you're just starting out, it's okay to use it temporarily. Fake it till you make it, but then start to make it quickly. Okay, this ends day two. So for your homework, I want you to create more of these transformation in language. Take a negative response and reword it into a positive response. And I'll see you again tomorrow for day three of our five-day challenge.
Thank you. Bye-bye.